Hello, fellow traders. Tis I, the Rumpled One. It is Wednesday, April the 18th, the year 2018. Let's talk trading. Winners win, losers lose, part three. I just got off the phone with a, uh, a new trader. Um, wanted to ask me a few questions. And so we were talking, and I mentioned to him something I just stumbled across sometime earlier this week. Uh, I have to find out who the author is, if I can uh, go back. I think it was in an email. But the guy said, if you are not trading a method, a system that has a positive expectancy, you're gambling. And there's a lot of truth to that. Because you see, winners, when it comes to trading... <laughs> They are definitely trading methods and systems, styles that they know work. That they know if they do it over the long haul, they're going to be a winner. Whereas the losers in the trading game, they have no clue, no idea. They can't tell you what their positive or what their expectancy is based on, you know, statistics. Although they can tell you about their great back test, but I saw a picture um, on a forum where they had, you know, the, all these traders are sitting there and it shows the, the uh, you know, the, the chart, All every trade was green. You know, they show the uh, performance of the portfolio. You know, it's like at a 30, 45 degree angle, you know, going up. And they go, yeah, that's demo. And then as soon as they put it in the live market, you know, it's a it's a screen full of red. <laughs> the, you got a another 35, 40, 45 degree angle on, on their um, portfolio returns, except it's going down. And these guys are all sitting there, you know, all sad faced and everything. But there's just so much truth to that. So, you know, those phony baloney demo back tests, just forget about it. You know, you got to get some skin in the game. You know, trade a penny a pip or a point or a dime a pip and, and you know, do 100 trades. You know, maybe the total risk is a dollar a trade or something. And after 100 trades, you know, do you have more than $100 or less? And that will pretty much tell you if you and your method are profitable. Now, don't blame the method if you're not executing flawlessly because that's your only only job as a trader is to execute flawlessly system method does everything else it should tell you you know pretty much when to trade what to trade you know when to get in when to get out but if you hesitate or if you try to push it or if you don't use money and risk management then chances are you are going to lose and lose big. So that being said, let's go ahead and look here. Okay, we can see that the yen is out of the wick zone. Surprise, surprise, the weekly wick zone, right? Uh, and, and for those of you just tuning in late this week, you can see the opening gaps have filled across the board. And I think we also were kind of taking a peek at uh, EuroCAD here. And you can see it's crossed a couple of these horizontal lines, went into the wick zone, and rocketed back out. That shouldn't surprise you. And here we go. Looking at the daily, you see the yen broke through here. Now it's back in, broke out of that, but now it's back in here. And you see here we've got some nice movement on the pound pairs. Look at that. You see they, they've definitely reversed off of the high. We have a reversal off a low here. And you can see how far they moved away from the daily open. And then looking here at the buy zone, in fact, I was talking to a trader about the buy zone and somebody else requested I put an alert on it. Well, um, and they were saying they thought that, you know, the indicator would say buy. 
Well, it doesn't really need to, um, but you know, all you need to know is price is in the zone. And then you need to watch. So you see here in this magenta color, th th those are all potential buy zone trades. You see here, it's above the open and it already triggered once. You see here, it's right near the open. It triggered there, but hey, guess what? It reversed on you. That happens sometimes. Oh, you see, this is New Zealand yen. Look at all the all the motion here, the movement during the Asian session. So right there was a trigger. Harry hindsight and a nice profit there. Hopefully, Harry took his profit either here or here. Then you can see here we had a nice movement to the downside, crossing the uh, the daily open there. And if you didn't take that trade and you waited here. Once again, there was there was uh, movement, and hopefully, uh, Harry Hindsight took his profit right there. So basically, you can almost think about taking profit, um, locking in that profit um, when it goes back into the wick zone that's going against you. So here you're short, and price open. Chances are it went down first, so it broke out of the wick zone, but here it's coming back. If it goes back in, then yeah, you should take your profit from here to here. That should, And then here, you see it went in, and if you waited for this one, you had to scratch that trade. Or unless you have your position size, you're in saying, no, I'll only scratch it if it tells me to. So it's telling you to buy, it's telling you to short. And that's why when I first put this out there, people kept asking me what the stop loss was. To me, it was so dang obvious, but then I just had to explain it to them. Um, but, you know, if your method's telling you to go short and you're long, your method's telling you uh, you should be stopping out. Uh, again, you can see here, we've only got 39 pips. There is no rat zone trade. No rat zone trade. Okay, here we go. You can see the open, the pivot right there. And you can see here that was yesterday's pivot. And it didn't hit it yesterday, but you see the following day it hit that missed pivot and then some. In fact, just to let you know, uh, when price opened on the uh, yen, I definitely took that trade and I exited actually at the weekly open right there because. It came back. So you see price was trying to head back to that weekly open and then it turned back around. So that was uh, not the, you know, plus, you know, it's sitting at R2, weekly open. Yeah, that's a good place to take profit off the table. Harry hindsight, right? No, these lines are, are there before the trade, not after. And we've got price action trading once again here. Um, I was talking to the new trader about horizontal line trading, and you can see here um, with, with the H1 candle color at the line, you have profitable trades. But not all the time. There's some losers. I mean, if you took this trade here at the line, there wasn't, you, maybe you got a pip, or maybe you scratched, or maybe you stopped out. So there wasn't really, really any profit there. But why are you trading at the end of the day anyway? <laughs> it just doesn't make, if you entered this trade, you know, the last hour of the day, uh, I think you might be uh, a trading junkie. You might just be a trading junkie if you enter the last hour of a session, something like, that, especially the New York session. Okay, uh, going in here, we've got yesterday's five lines, and I was telling the new trader, uh, you know, you can use the TRO HL5 indicator. Um, here we're showing the open, the high, the low, the close, and the midpoint. Um, you can show top bottoms if you want to look at wick zone type trades. You can put the pivot on there. But see, since pivot is only for the current day, week, or month, not the previous, that syndicator doesn't show it. So even though it says true, it's not showing on the screen. So I should probably just turn that off. Um, you can also have your, your 
of support and resistance off the pivot, R1, R2, and then the mid pivots, or you can do the gridiron, or you can show a fixed price right here. You can show the VWAP. Um, and right here, you can also show high low offset, which is another way of saying the buys, uh, the rat zone. So you could put the turn that to true, but maybe I, uh, no, I don't want to junk up the chart too much. Or you can show the open offset, which is 10 pips, which is also a way of showing the buy zone. So this one indicator pretty much does all the stuff I like to see. Um, yeah, I wrote it for me, <laughs> but you guys get to get to download it. Uh, no charge, no donation. It's just out there for you guys to use. And you, if you want to know where to look, look down here. You can find out where to get the indicators. Also, uh, if you haven't subscribed, subscribe on YouTube. And then also hit, click that little alert so you know when I put out new videos. Um, pretty much every day or every trading day when the market's open, I'll put out a video. But that way, but I'm not posting them as many different places as I used to because I'm busy doing other things. So... I'm only posting it where I post my code and on my Facebook uh, group. So anyway, enough of that. And we're looking at the Wick Zone. Price doesn't like staying in the Wick Zone. Yeah, I, I say it every day. Well, that's because it works every day. I mean, it's that simple. Um, and the Holo Zone, I think we were looking at something yesterday on M5. Let's just put that back to M15. And you can see here, you there's that weekly open... Um, right there, and you can see here what happened. It went there, reversed. There's a wick zone, and it came out. I'm sorry, a holo zone. Put that highest open in. You see, there's an open. So we've got these open crosses to the downside, and it's wicking in there. You see, it's you know it's not making higher high. So there was a nice trade to the downside. And I just turned this on a little while ago, as you can see, but the price action, um, you can see what happens when the ask drops below the highest bid, price goes down. I mean, it's simple. And you can see when price drop goes above the lowest ask, and it's going up. In fact, I was working on an indicator uh, Yesterday, I added something to the um, spread dots. Um, let me see. Maybe I can show you that. Where's a chart that has spread dots? The new spread dots. That's the old one. The, t the 18. There we go. Right here. Um, spread dots. Show you what's coming up here. Um I did two things. I put in a history. You see, it just tells you the current, but I've added a history where it will show um, the, the three previous, what price was doing. And then also, I want to see the um, peak and the valley as lines. I need to change that to show, say, show peak valley lines. Looks like I show ask line, show bid line. So... If I flip that on, no, I didn't mean to save it. Where is OK? There it is. So you can see here, these lines will stick. And some people, it, it, it's just for a visual. And I'm thinking maybe I should have them off to the right, give people that option. But I like the lines to the left. And so you can see here when it's putting in. and. And we've only got less than a minute, so we probably won't be able to see uh, this change over. So we'll have to see that tomorrow, unless price bounces and goes up here in the next couple of seconds. I'll try not to run over today. But anyway, just remember, you know, winners win, losers lose. And if you are not trading a method that has a positive X expectancy you're gambling so remember it's not what you trade it's how you trade it the rumpled one gonna go drain the banks